In the known universe, there is no place quite like this. I'm at the headquarters for Stern Pinball in Melrose Park, Illinois, the world's only pinball machine factory. Join me as I tour inside the imaginations of the best pinball designers and find out how they apply their methods to this bumper-driven madness. Then watch as I man the flippers, pull the plunger, and put my hands on history. Hazleton. Welcome to Hands-On History. The pinball machine is a keepsake of true Americana. It's a classic reminder of the nation's fondness for pop culture and amusing challenges. Every year, the Stern Pinball Company near Chicago produces thousands of new machines for sale around the world. Using air tools and custom fabricated materials, I'm going to help build a new game from the bumpers up. You'll see one of these uniquely American inventions begin life as an idea, then take shape as a prototype. From there, we'll go into production, adding the plungers, targets, spinners, ramps, and customized features that keep pinball fans coming back for more. Now, the best pinball games come from great pinball minds, folks that are dedicated to preserving this piece of Americana. Now, while it's true that some of those designs begin on the back of a napkin, most of them really evolve using a computer with computer-assisted or CAD design. This is uh, someone who does that a lot. Hey, Pat, how are you? Hi, Ron. <laughs> So uh, you're working on uh, actually a game that uh, is in development here, or actually is, is a working game right now? That's right. This is Ripley's Believe It or Not Pinball. Pat brings his pinball dreams to life on the computer, where his designs outline every machine down to the last detail. We have to make the game difficult enough for the player that he's interested in staying there and getting better and better and better and better with the, with the, the piece of equipment. There are more than 3,500 parts in every pinball machine, and the CAD design must be electronically and mechanically engineered so each part performs in coordination with the overall scheme. Each feature, from the bumpers to the magnetic ball stoppers, is positioned so that it can provide a specific reaction to the random action of the ball. The game designer wants the player to gradually learn how to score maximum points. To do this, the play field offers enticing hints about where to shoot the ball. Lights flash, buzzers sound, and players are pointed the way to a top score, if they have fast reflexes and good ball control. The whole shooting match is controlled by a microcomputer. Within milliseconds of a ball striking a bumper or hitting a target, the computer responds, setting off an electrical chain of events that feeds power into a wire coil. These coils are connected to tiny steel rods, and the electrical current coming through the coils causes the rods to move. It's this basic movement that powers the action on the play field, from the bump of the bumpers to the drop of the targets. Before a machine goes into full production, a series of prototypes called Whitewoods are constructed by hand inside Stern's pinball laboratory. So this is the lab where the mad pinball scientists hang out here, right? Eh? This is the lab where we build all of the prototypes prior to production. Very neat. And this is what well, looks to me like kind of a later stage prototype. This is the final Whitewood for Ripley's Believe It or Not pinball. So it's got everything here except the art. Right. Okay. He's going to try it? You can be a pinball game designer or tester. This is... Okay. So in, in, if you were testing this out right now, what would you be looking for? Uh, I, when, you're, when you make a shot, is, are there bad bounces that are happening in the game? Uh, when you miss a shot, where does the ball uh, end up? There you go. Now what you've just done is you've seen that that outer shot works, it flows very smoothly. So you, the, you really test this game from the player's perspective. I mean, how much do you actually play this game in this development stage? Every game designer plays the game from conception through final hundreds of hours over the course of development. After the game designer works out all the kinks on the whitewood, 
The blueprint is ready for production, which I kick off by routing my wooden play field. In pinball's early history, this was a time-consuming process. Workers spent hours using templates hand routing every play field. Today, Pat Lawler's computer-assisted designs are programmed into an automatic routing machine. So this is the blank or the panel that you begin with? Yes. So what do you, what do you, what's your first step? First step is just to slide it against both these boards. Okay. The second thing you have to do is just press the button to turn on the vacuum, which will hold this piece on the table. And after that, just press the start button. So the vacuum is going to suck it down? Of course. The routing bit and blank piece of wood come together with the bit moving one direction and the board moving another. These movements work in tandem to complete the routing as quickly and efficiently as possible. The automated router does in 10 minutes what used to take hours to complete by hand. Well, this is our play field so far. You can kind of think of this as the bottom of the pinball machine. The CNC router has cut out these openings. Some of them have had plastic inserts put in. The whole thing has then been sanded and has a coat of clear lacquer. Now, they call this a whiteboard at this point because there's no color on it. That's going to change very quickly. This is Rosario. How are you? So you're going to use a, a hand silk screening process to lay down uh, several colors on this, starting with, I guess, white. Eh? Right. Would you let me try this? Sure, you can. So just kind of walk me through it, Rosario. I really, I've never done this before. Run this way. So I'm just spreading the ink out right now, right? Yes. It's not going through right yet. We're just spreading it out. Right there. Okay. Now, now lower this. Put it down. Lower. Now it's in contact, right? Yes. Now take this right here. Uh huh. And the other hand over there. All right. And drag it back. Little bit, little bit. Now push down. Push down and go. Push a little more. So we're actually pushing the ink through the screen yes. and onto the board. Yeah. So right in here, <laughs> yeah. I didn't push hard enough. Yes. And we can, because it didn't go all the way through. Okay. This takes a real touch, doesn't it? You got it now. I got it? You got it. Okay. Yep. Now, so let's take this out. out. Hey, my first so screen pinball board. The fabric on a silkscreen frame can be nylon, silk, or certain types of polyester. Whatever the material, it's pulled tight around a frame, sort of like a canvas stretched for painting. Silkscreening is a color-by-color -color layering process, requiring four different screens for the basic cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Well, we've completed the basic routing of the playfield. Now we're ready to electrify our machine with an entire half mile of wire. We'll literally plug in the fun when we return to Hands-On History on the History Channel. Tomorrow on History Sunday, May 31st, 1970, nine journalists drove straight into the killing fields of Cambodia to expose the rebellion being waged by the Khmer Rouge. They were in search of a good story. Instead, they became the story. Nine men down, tomorrow night at 8 on the History Channel. For the feeling of freer breathing, Vicks VapoRub works as fast... <laughs> as fast... <laughs> as fast as you can put it on. Can your cold medicine do that? Get the quick mix. <laughs> you know that Verizon Wireless is offering camera phones for $49.99? Really? Yeah. But the deal ends October 11th. Oh, no. It's the Fall Phone Fest. Now everyone is rushing into a Verizon Wireless store to get an AudioBox camera phone for only $49.99 with built-in flash, zoom, and speakerphone. But you gotta hurry. The Fall Phone Fest ends October 11th. Say cheese. <laughs> Good. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Boston Market's new seasonal dinner specials. Lemon herb rotisserie chicken, exotic pan-Asian grilled chicken with Asian salad, and spicy chipotle meatloaf. Plus brand new seasonal sides. Broccoli spears with hollandaise, potatoes au gratin, and cranberry walnut relish. Boston Market. We're always cooking. Hi there. Bob Ehrlich, Governor of Maryland. Day off today? Yeah. Lots of chores? Yeah. How about a real day off? By order of the governor of Maryland, get in. Governor Bob says, be honest with yourself. You know you'd rather be playing golf than doing chores. So go, play golf in Maryland. 
Whether you're a beginner or almost ready for the tour, Maryland has more than 200 beautiful and reasonably priced golf courses to choose from. And they're all in this free guide. Call 1-866-MD-WELCOME, extension 74, for your copy. And go to visitmaryland.org for great package ideas that help you plan your golf getaway at the click of a mouse. A day off doing tours is not a day off. Call 1-866-MD-WELCOME, extension 74, for your free guide to Maryland Golf. Maryland, seize the day off. We can work with that. His presentation to the board was in an hour. And while he managed to keep that dry, well, he wasn't. Which is why he was pleased to discover that our selection of big and tall was not only extensive, but at prices that, well, wouldn't soak him. After all, he had enough of that for one day. You'll find big and tall sizes at the men's warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Code red. I'm being pursued. I'm procuring a getaway car. Pronto. I need a car. Now. Sure, but you'll need insurance. No problem. I'm going to eSurance. I can buy my policy online instantly. You're going to have proof of insurance from eSurance? Quote by print. Only at eSurance. If you're on the go, you've got to have eSurance. Get your quote at eSurance.com or call today. 1-888-ESURANCE. On the next conspiracy, make up your own mind about TWA Flight 800. Tomorrow night at 10 on the History Channel. In the hellish chaos of the skies, skin color counts for nothing. How would you want to fly for a country that thanks you by lynching you? Lawrence Fishburne stars in the true story of the first African-American fighter pilots who became one of the finest combat squadrons in World War II. The Tuskegee Airmen, tonight at 8 on the History Channel. Welcome back to Hands-On History. Over the years, many features have been added to the basic pinball machine. Here at Stern Pinball near Chicago, the plunger and the steel alloy ball are still part of the mix. But what about those extras like the dot matrix readout and the talking shrunken head? Who are you calling shrunken? Whatever the feature, they all receive power through an intricate electrical system made of a half mile of wire. After a game designer has worked out the exact placement of bumpers, spinners, and ramps on the whiteboard, a customized wiring scheme is designed. This scheme is plotted out on a series of boards. The wiring staff uses an automatic wire dispenser to measure off exact lengths and types of wire. Each strand is then threaded through a wiring board. At this point, one crossed wire can result in a pinball malfunction. A bumper with no juice won't bump, and a spinner disconnected from the electronic scoring system just spins for the heck of it. Once the wiring board is complete, the wires are bound together to form what are known as cables. These cables and the components they power are light years beyond what you used to find underneath a game's play field. The game of pinball dates back to the 18th century in a European game played on a bagatelle table. As in pocket billiards, players used cues and tried to sink balls into a set of holes for points. Then, in 1871, the steel spring was invented. This led to the creation of the pinball plunger and, with the start of the 20th century, machines like bingo and rollerball became mainstays of barroom entertainment. The next true leap forward for pinball came in 1933, when Harry E. Williams, considered the Thomas Edison of pinball, introduced electricity to the game. In addition to making pinball more exciting, Williams also used electricity to keep players from cheating by pushing the machines around until the ball rolled their way. I was afraid that would happen. Now, the basic tilt mechanism hasn't changed since Harry Williams invented the tilt bob in this older 1960s machine. I can show you how that works. Inside here is this metal bob hanging inside the ring. Now, once the machine is moved, if that bob contacts the ring, it completes an electrical circuit, the machine shuts down, game over. 
The tilt bob is just one of thousands of hardware parts powered by the machine's wiring cables. Before the play field can advance down the assembly line, technicians must line up the exact placement of the game's many features. Once installed, each of these features will be powered by individual wires bound within the wiring cables. Now here's a silk screen play field all ready to go. Now just a little bit further down the line here, several components are going to be attached to the back of this. Scores of them. Brackets, screws, T-nuts, and so forth. So before that happens, we have to decide exactly where those are going to be positioned, and that's the job of this machine right here. It's called the pants press. I think you'll see why in just a second. If you look in here, though, you'll see that there are a number of very small pins, pointed pins, sticking up. So the idea is we're going to load this into the machine. Victor, this is your machine, right? The other side. The other way? Like yeah, this? Like, that. like this? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, we slip it up in here? Yep. How do you know it's in the right spot here? Oh, I so see there's some got locator. The got the yeah, I see the pins over there. All right. This is the uh, start switch? Yeah, both, both pins. So you, you got to have both, both hands both on here. That way they're not in there. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. So this is probably why they call it the pants press. If you put a pair of pants in there along with the play field, you'd get a good pressing job. Now watch, when I take this out, if you look at the back of this, you'll see all of these dots right here. Those are small indentations, and each one of those will receive some kind of a screw or bracket. From the pants press, the plotted play field moves down the assembly line on a cart. Bracing parts and other pieces of the undercarriage are attached. Then the play field is flipped over and the board is transformed into a three-dimensional world of its own. Stern Pinball contracts with outside producers who mold and construct the various play field features to match the game setting, be it Middle Earth or outer space. As the cart moves down the line, everything is attached using sophisticated air tools. They help make short work of tasks once sluggishly performed with individual turns of a screwdriver. While the play field is being constructed, other workers are simultaneously building the upper and lower cabinets. And it's in the lower main cabinet that you mount the all-important flippers. Flippers not only make pinball a more entertaining pastime, they also make it harder to argue that pinball is a game of chance. Believe it or not, in 1942, playing pinball was illegal in New York City. Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia and other pinball prohibitionists likened the game to slot machines as they smashed them in the glare of popping flashbulbs. Let the gamblers, racketeers, and gangsters take notice that they have to keep away from New York from now on. In 1947, the Gottlieb Company introduced Humpty Dumpty, the world's first pinball machine with flippers. And with flippers keeping the ball in constant circulation, the pinball play field began to evolve. So where did it go from here? Um, this game is a spinning card, a, a, a card game uh, from uh, 1969 couple flippers but small still the small size not what we use today but facing the right directions pop bumpers drum unit scoring up here the game has progressed as more features were added over the years game builders tried to make pinball something that appealed to amateurs and experts alike we have a lot of toys or mechanical devices that that casual player can interact with and uh, he can tell by a physical state change that he, that he succeeded. He, he, the, the, the shrunken head will catch the ball, a drop target will fall, it's self-educating and because he feels good about it he does it again so we call it Pavlovian pinball. The, the key is that uh, as Harry Williams used to say, one of the great designers, the ball is wild so a little bit of control, a little bit of wildness and let that player have fun. The fun is just about to begin here at Stern Pinball. The wiring on my machine is complete and the play field is nearly assembled. Next, I'll plunge into my new game and go for a few rounds with a real pinball wizard. When we return to Hands-On History on the History Channel. Tomorrow on History Sunday, May 31st, 1970. 
Nine journalists drove straight into the killing fields of Cambodia to expose the rebellion being waged by the Khmer Rouge. They were in search of a good story. Instead, they became the story. Nine men down, tomorrow night at 8 on the History Channel. Thought you were in Boston. Change of plans. What's up? Change of plans. We need to reroute the shipment. New terms? New terms, new specs, new schedules. Show me. There you go. Change of plans. Okay, will do. See you in New York. Change of plans. See you in LA. Au revoir. Sayonara. So what's up? The usual. When change is part of the plan, that's on-demand business from IBM. You have reached the county clerk. For a business license, please press one now. <laughs> For a fishing license, press 2 now. For a fishing license, press 2 now. For a fishing license, press... For a fishing license, press 2 now. Please hold. Ing with the queen of heart arts, knowing it ain't really smart. Sometimes a small business owner needs to talk to a real person. The City Business Card, with real live small business specialists on the phone. That's a card you can count on. How fast do VaporUp's cooling vapors start to work so you can feel like you're breathing? So fast, we have time to show it to you again. Can your cold medicine do that? So the legend goes that God who miner and Maria. And the tradition dictates that every time a couple walks into these bathrooms, the man has to kiss the lady. Otherwise, they will have seven years of bad luck. <laughs> Can I go again? <laughs> Only in Mexico, legends turn into reality. Mexico, beyond your expectation. You think I'm scared of the dark? Some spiders? I'm an expert here to keep you toasty. Hey. At Carrier, our unmatched expertise hey, is trusted hey. in more homes than any other brand. Okay, game over. Carrier, turn to the experts. Hey, who's tired of paying five dollars for a bag of peanuts? Yeah. Who's tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company? Yeah. But what if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than ten dollars. Other plans charge at least 40, so talk all you want. Or talk less and pay less. You, uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. The following is an urgent message for all inventors. Who cashed in on your last great idea? Do you have another invention? Do you need a patent? Then you need InventTech. Everyone laughed at my pot that cooked and drained pasta. If I had the patent, I'd be rich. Snap your fingers, turn on the light. That was my idea. But I never thought to get a patent. Call InventTech now for a free inventor's kit and get our free video or DVD with your confidential submission. Call 1-800-758-7722. In the hellish chaos of the skies, skin color counts for nothing. Why would you want to fly for a country that thanks you by lynching you? Lawrence Fishburne stars in the true story of the first African-American fighter pilots who became one of the finest combat squadrons in World War II. The Tuskegee Airmen. Tonight at 8 on the History Channel. Welcome back to Hands On History. Now here we have a nearly completed playing field for a brand new pinball machine. The mechanics are all here, but for this to really work properly, well, it kind of needs a brain. And that's what Don's doing over here. This is the thinking part of the machine. Yes, it is. How does this part talk to the brain? Well, here we have a switch which, when it's activated, sends a signal to the input-output circuit board, which then sends a signal to the central processing unit, and then sends another signal back to the input-output board, and then to the lamp or solenoid, whatever is turned on. So that looks pretty much what you might see inside any computer, yes, right? Yes, it is. This is almost finished. It's just missing one thing. 
a talking drunken head. Yes. Can I put this on? Yes, you may. It goes right up here, right? Yes. Okay. Easy there. And with that, I would pronounce this playing field finished. Every time Stern Pinball begins production of a new game, internet chat rooms frequented by pinball devotees light up with rumors about what's next. I was able to get a top secret peek at a machine that the public won't get to see for quite some time. If you want to see the future of pinball, then you've got to visit the office of Steve Ritchie, pinball designer. He's got something in development right now. Hey, this is the newest thing, huh? You're still working on this. Yes, this is Elvis Presley. This is the second uh, Whitewood, and um, it's coming along very nicely. We are uh, we're, we're testing the game and trying to make sure that all the parts will hold up uh, out in the field. And uh, actually, we're checking the fun level. See how fun it is. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Can you talk to me and play pinball with two balls at the same time? Well, I can play one ball and talk to you at the same time. I, I just lost that first one there. So this is the first time ever that the uh, pinball machine has been done with the Elvis thing. Yes, it is. The music that we have and everything else is uh, uh, a very strong draw. There's a, there's a huge fan base for Elvis, and a lot of people that collect pinball machines also our Elvis fan. So there's going to be actual Elvis music like we're hearing right now oh, yeah. as part of this machine. Yeah, seven tunes we've got. But it's Heartbreak Hotel, uh, Jailhouse Rock, oh, yeah. the best, Hound yeah. Dog, um, I'm All Shook Up, etc. Now is Elvis himself going to be here? Yeah. I mean, in pinball form? Actually, he sits right here. Well, actually, he doesn't sit there. He moves and dances. I have a model here. This is Elvis. By the way, this is not Elvis. This is just a, a plastic toy. But Elvis can, you know, can can talk and and dance and 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 yeah. Well, he's got the Elvis speak moves. To, right. From Humpty Dumpty to the hip shaking king of rock and roll, pinball machines continue to evolve. But outside the factory, there's another key player in the ongoing perfection of this uniquely American game: the pinball wizard. Now we've seen the engineering, the art, and the magic that goes into the making of a pinball machine. Rumor has it there's a real pinball wizard inside. I'm going to go in and see just how good he is. Hey, Keith. Hi, Sorry to interrupt. How are you? <laughs> Very good. They say you're the wizard. I am. Now, i got to tell you something. When I look at a pinball machine, I see this. Gets the ball out there. The flippers, the buttons on the side, to me, the object is to keep the ball from going down here. Right. For you, it's a lot more complex. Absolutely. And a lot more subtle. So kind of show me some of the things that, you know, a, you know, a, an expert player like yourself would try to do with a machine like this. Okay. Well, first of all, the number one thing is, back. you know, you don't just pull the plunger all the way back. You want to try and get the, plate, the ball out onto the play field gently. See how the ball just like stopped and I got a chance to shoot it? So can, you can actually aim this ball? You right. can pick targets up here? Yes. Right. Once you play the game enough, I know where the ball is going to go every time I shoot it. So I'm not reacting to the ball. I'm expecting the ball to do something. So this is going to start a round for me. This is going to be a multi-ball. So, you know, practice, practice, practice is the best thing that you can do. So what do you say? Have a challenge? Sure. I lost it. The ball will come out of there. Where? Oh, no. I forgot the nudge. Oh, that would have been a nudge to the right. Give it your best shot. I don't know how you do it. Let's see, Ron, 984,000, Keith, 7,343,000. I bow to the master. Accepted. Well, after bouncing around the magical world of pinball, it's easy to see why this amusement continues to pull the quarters out of pockets of millions. This is self-contained theater. It offers a tactical challenge that many have taken, but few have mastered. And it doesn't look like I'm going to get back on this machine anytime soon. I'm Ron Hazelton. Thanks for watching. Hands on History. Tomorrow on History Sunday.
May 31st, 1970, nine journalists drove straight into the killing fields of Cambodia to expose the rebellion being waged by the Khmer Rouge. They were in search of a good story. Instead, they became the story. Nine men down, tomorrow night at 8.